Happy Saturday. Long time, no vlog. Anyways, you can tell we haven't really been vlogging regularly at all recently. Um, we're trying to get back into it. We just started our new cycle, our new frozen embryo transfer cycle, which I'll talk about a little bit. When Chelsea's back, Chelsea's off visiting a friend right now who um, is moving back south. And I know we haven't really been vlogging a lot lately. I think we want to try and be a bit more regular with our vlogs and apparently with our hand gestures too. And keep you guys up to date as to what's happening with our next cycle, our thoughts, our feelings about it, and a few other things. But in the meantime, we just started a new cycle, which means it's time for Caitlin's bi-monthly, every other month, not twice a month, um, frantic cleaning session, as she like feels weird nesting instincts for a pregnancy that doesn't exist. If you like cleaning montages, are you sure in for a treat today? Fryer's stealing our instructions. I need it! Fryer! <laughs> I need it! Are you okay? Are you okay? <laughs> this is professional quality right now. Um, we got these chairs. Hang on. My school kit chairs. 100% Canadian made. I think in the States you call them something else. We call them Muskoka chairs. And we are going to put them together so we can have a little fire tonight even though it's disgustingly hot out it's gonna cool down a little bit later we're gonna make some s'mores we're gonna talk about fertility stuff and adoption stuff so it's gonna be you know really fun times uh but first we have to put our stereotypical lesbian butch stuff on and uh put some chairs together there's too many parts there's too many parts fryer rosie there's too many parts Help. We had to move the tomato and the pepper plants. The tomato plant pla <laughs> plants perked up. You can see that a huge amount of tomatoes there. Um, they perked up. They had been really wilty. And there's more tomatoes on this plant in here. We just got one teensy tiny one on this one. Hold on. Um, but the peppers are still struggling, which is okay. We got a lot of peppers off of it. Excuse. Okay, this is ridiculous because this is all one chair, just in pieces. And if I wanted to put this chair together from this many pieces, Costco, I would have just gone to Ikea, damn it. Okay, that was a huge fail. We didn't have one of the drill bits we needed. So we're gonna have to come back to that and finish putting together our chairs. They're just kind of half put together now. But we're still doing the fire, we're still making s'mores, still gonna be good. She says, frustrated. Chelsea is our fire maker extraordinaire. She started the fire. I don't know anything about making a fire. It looks good to me. Let's see. <laughs> Starting her up. It's an itty bitty fire, but. And a very rusted cover that we. You might want to move your glasses, babe. Yeah, probably. I need a marshmallow. Chubby bunny. Chubby bunny. Oh. I'm still being mad about the chairs. Yeah. Hold on. Hello. 
Hello. What you doing? Are you just smelling your marshmallow? Yes. Beautiful. Blech. Now it's mine. Okay. Now it's yours. <sighs> Chelsea got like this perfect, perfect golden toasty roasty on hers, and usually my method is I just shove it into the flame and let it blacken and let it, yeah, let it burn. But this guard is gonna stop me from doing that. I think he encouraged me to have a more well-rounded toasty roasty marshmallow. <laughs> And it's like rusty, so you gotta keep it off. Yeah, there. you don't you don't want that. Our twenty five dollar fire table. Yeah. You know, you get what you pay for, and in this case <laughs> In case everyone's wondering You get a mean. concern of tetanus. <laughs> Things updates. Um Well Chelsea just started a cycle. We're doing a natural wrecked cycle. Wrecked in this lighting. This is supposed to be the best lighting. Apparently, this is not like good. sunset lighting, and we're not looking our best selves here. That's okay. Meh. Um, you just started a cycle. Do you want to talk about that? It's a low medication cycle, which, uh, and if you've been following, what's going on, eyebrow? Okay. If you've been following, um, kind of what we've talked about this, the last cycle we did before we took our month long break really messed me up. Um, the progesterone and the and the estrogen and the birth control were just ultimately too much for me. Um, so uh, the doctor, it's kind of a, a unique like mishmash sort of protocol. Um, in um, the modified natural. Modified natural protocol. Um, so, <laughs> so what happens, <laughs> goodbye. So what happens is um, they stimulate my it's actually quite similar to an IUI cycle they stimulate my um those things follicles. yep oh my god it's one of those days uh they stimulate my follicles um I take the medication for it for five days it's an oral medication um and then they'll check it again uh this coming Saturday you enjoying yourself mm-hmm okay and then so basically you have more eggies so your body makes more estrogen. Mm -hmm. So it's your body making the estrogen instead of you taking estrogen. Exactly. And when your lining is all good to go, they trigger you to induce ov ovulation. Yep. And then seven days later, we have the transfer. Yep. And then you're going to do progesterone support with suppositories. Yep. And then HCG shots every three days, which makes the decision for us about whether or not we're testing at home. Because it won't be that. accurate. We're kind of just like letting my body give off the signals and stuff and produce what it needs to produce. And, um, sorry, I'm very brain dead tonight. You're just tired. It's been a long weekend. Yeah. Um, or maybe it's the follicles. Uh, but I'm on day three and I've had no symptoms, which is by this time of my cycle, I'm on my birth control and it's miserable for everyone in our house. So, I, yeah, I'm having a no birth control party over here. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's just awful. And then I'd get migraines and oof. so yeah, I'm I'm just interested to see if this ends up working. Uh, I mean, if not, we have a plan going forward. Yes. So. Do they know our plan? No one knows our plan. No one. We knows went to plan. an adoption session. Mm-hmm. Um, as part of Pride Month. Yeah. So Pride ran it for LGBT. Plus, couples who are interested in fostering an adoption. Mm -hmm. We both really liked this session. We liked what we learned. Mm. We thought it was really informative. I think it helped form our plan moving forward. Do you agree? I would agree. Chelsea left, like, pumped. I, I was like, we're in such a good position to foster and adopt a child. We are, like, the perfect family. Chelsea, like, wanted to give up on our embryos and just move on to foster adoption because sometimes when you you hear new things when you're in the TTC process you're like oh that's the thing we should do TTF trying to family TTF. trying to child T ah! TTC trying to child trying to child oh so we left really excited one of the you want marshmallow Uh, 
um, one of the programs. Hang on, Chelsea's gonna marshmallow. I'll talk. You can just talk in the background. Okay. Uh, we just we're so hungry for marshmallows. We don't want to impede the process. This is payback. Bottom, bottom. No, it's gonna burn you. I'll do it for you. I'm all eating s'mores. Mm -hmm. And they talked a lot about a program that's it's not called Foster to Adopt. We just keep trying to call it that because that's what they call it when you do it for dogs. It's called something resource. Something resource family. You're a something resource family. And basically, because here at least, you have to be a crown ward to be adoptable. So that means that your sort of custody is given up to, to the crown, to the, to the country. Um, and that's really hard to do at a young age, basically. So there's basically no babies that are available for adoption. So what they do is they have this program where they place kids with people who are both foster parents and who are also able to be adoptive parents. So the idea is that they're, these are kids who are in the foster system. They're not able to be adopted yet but the expectation is that they're not gonna be able to return to their birth family, or there's no known family who are able to take them. Hang on. S'mores break. It means that usually you'll have a younger child place with you, and they stay with you for the year and a half, two years, whatever, um, until they become adoptable, and you adopt them. And we heard a lot about this program. We were yeah. really interested in it. We've always been interested in adoption. We always planned on adopting our second, third kids, whatever number they fall into. And so now we're kind of wondering, ooh, are we gonna be adopting first? Or are we gonna be having a biological child first? We're gonna wait and yeah. see how these embryos go first. Uh, we came in because our neighbors came outside and also it was getting really dark. So the camera wasn't really picking up anything. And the anyways. fire was starting to go out. And the fire was going out and it was just the right time. Mm -hmm. Where did we end off? I think we were saying, end of the year, we're going to stop trying to conceive using fertility methods. For now. For now. And we're going to switch to focusing on foster and adoption. Mm -hmm. And then later on, we may, after we have one or two kids, decide to go back and try for a bio baby. Yeah. And we'll see. The one thing I learned from the session that I found really helpful, and I was really... Like, the person, I think, who asked it was being super brave. Um, asking about whether or not having mental health concerns affects your adoption or foster application. Yeah, that was like, good I of them to that's ask. something that, like, a lot of... I mean, it's something that comes up for a lot of LGBT plus people. So, it's a really relevant question when you're talking to our group about foster adoption, because it probably would have ruled out a lot of people in the room. Yeah. And the answer was just that it's it's not about, like, having a diagnosis or struggling with something in the past, but how you're doing now, mm. and whether or not it, like, really affects There's any risk or your day-to-day -day life. Do you have the the mental energy in your life to devote a to a child? You know, like, are you Who able... Who may have their own mental health. Yeah, are you able to... Likely will have their manage... own mental health stuff. Sort of those day-to-day -day things. Oh. Chelsea's wilting. No, you gotta talk. What did you think about the adoption? I mean, I got really geared up about it. Yeah, Chelsea did. So. Uh, uh, they talked a lot about how many kids were in foster care in Yeah, it's hard city. to hear those numbers. And how few foster homes there are. Mm-hmm. It was super helpful to us because we were able to, like, oh, she's got things to say. Where is she? 
I don't know. Oh, she's like by her butt over here. Oh. We were able to ask because we'd always planned Juliet. And you can just see her tail there. Oh, there she is. <laughs> the elusive Juliet. Juliet! Has been caught on the vlog. Psst, psst. Hey, Mookie. Anyways, we were able to ask questions about sort of like what. Because we, we want to have kids both hopefully through IVF and through yeah. adoption and fostering. So it's but good to get that information. What happens, what happens first doesn't matter as much to us. Yeah. Oh, and the other thing they said was that it has to be in birth order. So if we have a baby Ooh. through IVF, then I'm like scrunching up this pillow like crazy. She's gone. If we have a baby through IVF, then we... Like, we can only adopt a child who's younger than that first biological child. Yes. The bir- keeping keep birth order is the, important. like, natural birth order. Which makes family. sense when you think about it. Because, like, introducing suddenly, like, an, an older, older sibling, sibling would be throws weird. off the dynamic a lot. So, that's something to think about. And yeah. they usually don't recommend trying to foster or adopt until, like, eight months to a year after you have a biological baby. It takes about a year. Just in case you're wondering about any of these things, I don't know if it's true for your, like, local... In Canada, it's like you go to your local children's aid, or, or I guess you do it privately, but it's not what we'd be looking at. If you have any questions about <laughs> quack ferns, <laughs> if anyone has any questions about fostering or adopting for LGBT families, we may have heard an answer, so you can always ask us. If we don't know, we'll tell you we don't know, and then be yeah. able to no further help. No, I mean, there's probably somewhere we can point you to. Yeah. To get your answers but let us know and wish us luck on this cycle we will keep you updated we're gonna try and get back into the habit of vlogging better right yeah right right we are so hit subscribe so you we're can both, tell we're both at we... a better mental health place so yeah we're not tired as tired all the time yeah. anymore this is not good proof of that but no hit the subscribe this is good button. tired stop it you're like interrupting my promo Thumbs up and good night. <laughs> <laughs>